Hey there, Riley Car Guy here, and today let's put a V8 into an Xterra. This is the video you've all been waiting for and the video that the entire series has been leading up to. Speaking of the entire series, if you want to catch up on these videos, go ahead and look in the upper right hand corner of the screen where you're going to find the playlist of all of the videos leading up to this, like I just said. While the engine was out, 8-Ball got a nice upgrade. I redid the entire steering rack. That includes the high pressure line that goes to the pump, the line that goes to the cooler, and the one from the reservoir down to the pump. I briefly mentioned this like nine videos ago, but it was leaking, so um, I never really took the time to figure out where it was leaking from, so I just rebought everything. Because the last thing I want to do is deal with that once the engine's in. I also went and installed the two items we purchased in the last video. That'd be the heater core fitting. We took the old one off of the back of the engine bay, which was really nice to get out of there, and installed our new piece. The bottom is going to go to the engine, and the top is actually going to go to the overflow tank. You can reuse your old hose, but I had Angel from Offroad Gorilla send me the pre-cool hoses that match the rest of my radiator hoses. They actually make kits specifically for VK swaps into Xterra, so if you're interested in that, go ahead and look in the description below where you'll find a link to his website. I also swapped out the other AC line. The one that came with the VQ40 is going to be too short, and the one that we purchased is just the right size. For some reason, my camera was acting weird, so sorry for like the fever dream type look there. Other than that, we could technically tackle some of the brake lines, but those are doable with the engine back in, and frankly, I just can't wait any longer. So let's just jump right into the fun part. I already have it kneeling. Uh, I took the tires off just like before, just like the way we took it out, right? So we're just gonna mimic that, but this time we're going in. As part of the steering rack job, I took the differential out, so it should be a little bit easier than taking it out. And my steering linkage is still disconnected. I didn't reconnect it, even though I put the rack in. That way, hopefully, everything just goes in nice and smoothly. So without further ado, let's do it. Once it's up um, and I get the transmission over top of the steering rack, I'm going to get the transmission jack underneath the, uh, underneath the vehicle. If it's going to be like taking it out, we have to go way high, more than I'm probably ever going to be comfortable with. So just have to go with it. It's not like lifting it higher makes it any heavier, you know? I just like to go into panic mode. Pull this. Shove this underneath, get it ready to receive the transmission. All right, here we go. I'm gonna gently push here. Woo, oh God, more than enough space. Wanna not let it rotate. I'm gonna gently push. For some reason, my uh, mount is going sideways. There we go. Slow and steady wins this race, guys, right? Oh, oops, just smacked the transfer case. All right, so now we can lower it down very, very gently. All right, and what you're gonna find is we're starting to clear that transmission tunnel, but we still have plenty of space uh, above the steering rack. In fact, I should probably go down a little bit more. I'm just constantly checking. Now I'm gonna start tilting uh, back up forward. So basically what that means is I'm gonna bring the load leveler closer to the front, which is gonna bring the back down. There we go. And that's gonna allow me to keep pushing it back. But the reason I'm tilting it is because I want to make sure that the exhaust headers make it over top. Oh, crap. what's leaking now? All over the new steering rack. Come on. I left one of my hoses down. I'm going to quickly wipe that up because it's going to be hard to access afterward. Now would be a really bad time for this lift to fail. I have the exhaust manifolds. The one on the left side is high enough, but these are not symmetrical, which is pretty horrible. We're starting to wedge a little bit only because the damn steering is uh, creating a, a pinch point and I didn't lift it up high enough. So I actually got to back out a little bit. There we go. Then once it's back out enough, I got to pull this. All right. I think we're in a pretty good spot. I'm going to keep going. Probably hard to see. I have the uh, manifold just above the mount. So looks like I can actually keep going. So I'm going to do that. Yeah, it's getting caught right there. There we go. So just lift a little bit, try to get it over. The, the right side, I mean, I, you probably can't see it, but I got five inches over here, so I certainly don't need that space. But it's still free floating. That means it's not hitting the transmission tunnel. So let's go again, see if I can lift it over. Oh, I think I just did. Ooh, let's go. Once that's over, we can start going down. There it is. Awesome, awesome. I think the whole thing needs to come this way. Yep. There we go. All right, more adjustment. I'm going to bring it forward more and then actually drop it just a smidgen, even though... Yeah, I have about an inch I can drop it. There we go. Excellent. So far, so good. Still free floating. Nothing's smashing anything else. So I guess go further back. Up top, you got to keep your 
keep your uh, eyes up here because we're getting damn close to that wall. Can I go any further down? That's how we're looking now. Yes. I'm gonna check the transmission. I'm very concerned about it. Slide that jack back. I didn't realize I was gonna go this far. Still looking good. Yes, it's still completely free floating. We're nearly clearing the uh, steering rack, which is awesome. Now I think if we go down, it's gonna start going like this, right? Kind of like, like that. And now we have a lot of space, so let's do that. All right, transmission is nearly down on the ground. If I lower it some more, once it lands on the jack, it should start to pivot. Yes! So what it's doing now is going like this, because I'm putting, I'm basically stopping the transmission from going any lower. Woo, uh-oh, hitting, hitting something up here. I was hitting the wire loom right here on the, uh, what is that, power steering pump bracket, which, wait a second, I don't even need that. Wow, I forgot, the bracket sits on the engine. Well, I'm pulling that out right now, P let's pause. All right, I don't know what else it does. Looks like not much, but I'm taking it off. I don't think we need it. All right, back to business. All right, so now I, I'm hitting the, I'm hitting this. So now what I need is for everything to kind of come this way. So that would include lowering it and, well, that's pretty much it, just lowering it. I don't really have many other options. So I think what I'm gonna do now is lift the back of the transmission and that should tilt everything this way. Because as you can see, we have fully cleared our steering rack, which is really nice. And we're actually probably, I don't know, eight inches from the actual mounts. That helping? Yeah, actually it is. That actually may have been the secret, because now when I drop it, not only is it gonna continue to slide back, but hopefully that thing won't hit the cowl. It's hitting the loom, it's probably gonna be okay, but I really don't like it. That's a lot of work put into that, so. Let's uh, continue to be vigilant. Oh, we're so freaking close. So I guess transmission up. Transmission up. Again, trying to move this forward. I think that did it. Whew, Jesus, this girdle is making it so hard to breathe. I think I need to try to get the transmission higher. There's still a lot of space in the tunnel. So I think I just have to get it, get it higher. I mean. We, the problem is, is that we're about that far behind the, um, the mounts, so the mounts need to sit in their little spot there, uh, but I'm hitting this first, basically. But if I get this low enough to go under the cowl, then it's already sitting on the, uh, on the, um, the little cradle, the thing I literally just said, and I can't remember what I said. Well, I think you know what's coming next, boys. I think I'm just gonna damage this cowl. So I'm gonna push the engine back. You don't need all of that cowl, dude. There's, there's a lot of cowl in this truck. Okay, there it goes. All right, we're so close now that I'm gonna drop it, damage this cowl as much as I need to, deal with it later. Oh, this is where I really need a friend. All right, I need to call in reinforcements, get the hubby out here. Jesse's on the jack here, and so I'm gonna push back while he very slowly lowers it to get it into the, uh, where the mounts sit. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get a shot for you, but we're gonna try. Here we go, let me uh, start, let me put pressure on first, like this, yep and then go ahead and start to lower a little bit. <clears throat> okay. Okay, go ahead, all the way down. It's in. Nice, that wasn't too bad, for my part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, my friends, ugh, is a VK56 in an Xterra. Video series over. Just kidding, plenty of work to do. What I'm going to do next is get it sort of officially in. I have the uh, bolts lined up, the bolt holes lined up. I can't believe that that worked out, but I'm gonna get the engine mounts in, make sure those are good. Then we're gonna raise up the transmission and we're gonna get that uh, transmission cross member installed. So I'm gonna make sure that everything is solidly installed in here and then we'll start throwing everything back together. So let's do it. All right, I screwed up a couple things. The uh, Steering linkage, I flipped all the way up, and I shouldn't have, and that ended up creating a uh, situation where I can't get the linkage back down to the steering rack because it hits the AC lines, which the AC line we bought is wrong, by the way, so I'll have to fix the description in there in the other video, but let's see how this goes. They're dropping right in and threading right in. Oh, man, we dropped it right on the right spot. 
It helps that there's little guide pins, but so there's those two. We'll tighten those down and then we'll do the other side. I went ahead and started them with my fingers because I definitely learned my lesson yesterday when I cross-threaded the living hell out of the aluminum bracket for the power steering rack. So yeah, I'm glad I did that too because on the passenger side, on the right side, the bracket was not far enough back. So I literally had to come up again and just push it real hard to slide the bracket back and then I was able to slide them in. So who knows, I could have cross-threaded those two. Seems to be my MO lately. So we'll put these down to spec and then we'll go tackle the transmission. All right, with it secured in place, I'm going to uh, drop it uh, completely. The transmission is on a jack and the engine is uh, on, obviously mounted, right? So we're good. And now that's actually not, oh, that's actually not nearly as bad as I thought it was gonna be. So totally worth it. 10 out of 10 would do again. Damage the cowl that is, not swap the motors. I'm gonna pull the chains off the slingers and deal with the slingers after we get the transmission mounted. I just wanna get this engine hoist. Honestly, I wanna get it freaking packed up and put back in the corner. I hate how much space it takes up. Alrighty, let's get this cross member in. I went ahead and uh, I took a flap disc and I grinded the surfaces on the cross member where it's gonna slide into the frame. I want it to be as smooth as humanly possible and we're also gonna grab chassis grease and rub the chassis grease on there on both sides as well. On the frame side, I also sanded, made sure that was as smooth as it can be. And then of course, you're, we're gonna get grease on that as well. I also put eight ball on its own four legs here. I dropped it back down and then I pushed it forward and then got rid of that damn engine hoist and put that away. So I wanna make sure it was all on its, again, on its four feet. And the reason I did that is because first of all, it's gonna be higher up. And secondly, the jack stands, where we put the jack stands, interferes with installing this. So do all that. Then we'll get underneath. Um, I'm gonna get some bolts ready. Once we press it into place, we can slide the bolts in and put them down to torque. All right, I'm gonna slather up and go to town. It's messy, but I don't even care, to be honest. I just really want this to go smoothly, literally, you know? They say a little goes a long way, but imagine how much a lot goes, right? It goes really far. All right, I'm gonna go hit the other side, then we'll slide it in. Now we're gonna probably need to lift the transmission a little bit, get it out of the way, uh, because I'm gonna leave the mount on, and the mount's gonna slide into these three holes. Once that's up and out of the way, concentrate on getting the sides put in. Then we can sort of wiggle the transmission to get it into place. I'm gonna need my floor jack, because we're gonna have to press this in. So, <sighs> lifting the transmission now. Hopefully I'm not squishing anything. I'm gonna slide this into place. Okay. There we go, so that one, and then we'll have to lift that up. So I'm gonna get the jack under here. This will probably fall, but that's all right. And once the jack's under here, I'm gonna get a jack stand on the other side. To try to even it out as much as I can. All right, let's put it right there. Grab a jack stand and then lift this side up. Come on, there we go. Oh no. Oh God, oh, I can just jam the thing underneath. All right, good. This actually looks like it can afford to go down a little bit, which I kind of want to do. Yeah, because I just feel like it's hitting something. All right, so I jammed that in there. That's definitely precarious at best, but we have our best chance of lining it up when it's, uh, when it's up, right? Instead of one side being down. So I'm gonna look at where it's at. I already dislike it. So it needs to come this way. We're gonna try to get these bolt holes to line up. So let's do this. There we go. I'm gonna go hammer it on the other side. Very gently like. Let's take a look at that. Oh wow, that might actually be dead on. You know what they say, right? Ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. That's absolutely true here. It looks like, it actually looks good now. So I'm just gonna grab this, start jacking it up. All right, oh my God. Did it go straight in? Eh, it's damn close. All right, so if I get a bolt in there, pull on it this way, it should align. Oh, no, 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 no. This guy will align the holes. Wow, that works really well. Let's see if these will go in now. Holy shit. I'm gonna throw some nuts on it just to make sure they're secure. There we go. Now, drop this and repeat on the other side. All right. Now this one should theoretically press straight in with no complaints. Let's take a look. And they look aligned. Let's, let's drop these in here. Oh, wow, okay. So now, 
these actually fed straight in while I was doing this job. So we had it aligned. That's utterly fantastic. And now, oops, well, this thing drops way too fast. And now these are in. Yep. Grab the three nuts. Make sure those are secured. All right, let's get them all down to spec. All right, guys, that's actually gonna do it for this video. Um, I was hoping to get a little bit more done, but if I stop now, I can run inside, start editing, and get this thing out um, in a couple hours, which is my normal release time. It is official. We have a VK sitting inside of the eight ball. Dropping it in was really not that bad. It felt like it was a little bit easier than actually pulling, uh, pulling it out of the Titan. There is a shocking amount of space in here. There's really not a ton less space than there was with the VQ40. I'm able to get to everything that I need to get to it. It looks like, we'll find out. And as promised by the people who have done this before me, all the mounts and everything are all the same. So everything's already strapped up, everything's secured, and the rest is just getting everything else connected. If you liked this video, please go ahead, scroll down, click that like button. Be sure to subscribe. We're near the end of this project, so see it through with me. Be here for it. And support the brands that support me. Of course, if you've been following along, you know that I got this Xterra from Duncan from Nissan Parts Polar. Check him out if you need any OEM Nissan parts. And check out Offro Griller where I got these cool radiator hoses. And you know, they have a whole bunch of other cool stuff as well. Both their links will be down in the description below. All right, until next week, thanks for watching.